And now then, everyone, welcome to another episode of Highlander, the show where we talk about every single legendary card in Hearthstone. I'm joined, as always, by my good friend and co-host, Jamie. How are you doing, Jamie? Good, thanks, James. Hi, everybody. I'm James, telling you to sit back and relax as we talk about some more cards. Hemet Nessingwery. Five mana, six free, legendary, neutral minion. Battle cry. Destroy a beast. What do you want to say about this, Jamie? I mean, it's just not a legendary effect, is it? It's not bad in an interesting way. Like some cards, like Major Domo or Dustful and Aviano or something like that. It's not, it's not like useless, but entertaining. It's just nothing. I suppose like the natural comparison to it at this point in the game is the Black Knight, right? It's much worse than destroying a taunt, that's for sure. Absolutely. And then 6-3 is awful stats. It's terrible stats on a 4 drop, let alone a 5. Yeah, it can just be traded up so easily, right? By just anything remotely aggressive. By a 2 drop, usually. I mean, it's funny because at this point in the game, a lot of the aggro decks are the beast decks, like your face hunters and that sort of thing. So this effect is obviously targeted at that at that point, but then, like, why is it started this way? And why does it cost 5? I just don't really know why they bothered to print it. Well, it's to counter Gazrilla. Nice, yeah. Like I say, though, this is before we get anything remotely big in the Beast tribe, right? As I say, Gazrilla, maybe King Muckler. Like, you haven't really got much bigger stuff, like Malone as well. There aren't really many big beasts, and they're certainly not the ones that are just, you're seeing them every game, right? Beasts, for the most part, at this point, are like tiny minions. I mean, even destroying a Savannah High Main isn't that great. Yeah, because the 2 twos can just kill this. Exactly. I mean, that's like best case at this point in the format, for sure. Situational and unplayable when it's not useful. And then it's when it is useful, it's still unplayable. So it's like... I mean, it's funny that they made this and then a few years later they went and made a worse version of it because then they went and printed EMP Operative, which is a 5-mana free free battle cry destroy a mech. Bizarrely, bizarrely designed cards both of them yeah emp operative was in standard when zeliax was in like 60 percent of decks or whatever and no one ever played emp operative so that tells you the power of the effect let me ask you a different question if they flip the stats of this card to make it a five mana three six that has to like make it somewhat more playable than it is right now because if you think of it as like an anti-aggro card it's still a terrible card but it's not nearly as bad right Right. It's more playable, but it's still pretty rubbish. Oh, it's still, yeah, you've never, like, put it in a deck, but... Maybe make it four mana and flip its stats, then you're talking. Well, I mean, then we're getting to kind of s- silly territory, but... Well, it's how Master Shaw, but, but it's obviously still worse than how Master Shaw at that point. Yeah. Like, what's the modern-day version of this? And I think it's, like, Bone Brittle Destroyer from Scholomance, or the six mana four for Priest Minion from... Gargon's Awakening, yeah, the dragon, Aeon Reaver. Yeah, so, like, those are the sort of recent examples, and then you've obviously got stuff like Vile Spine Slayer and Rogue and that sort of thing, but it seems that they quite quickly learned that this sort of very specific removal on a understated minion is not very good. Yeah. And thankfully, they've sort of gone away from that design, because no one really likes Hemet. Well, apparently, according to the... Gamepedia strategy page. It can be used in conjunction with Hex or Polymorph to destroy <laughs> the resultant minion entirely. What do you say to that? It's just genius, isn't it? It's actual genius. Four Reaper, 4,000. Eight mana, six, nine. Mech, neutral legendary. Also damages the minions next to whomever it attacks. So before we get into like the competitive viability of this card, I just want to say one thing very quickly. I think this card has got one of the best, if not the best voice line in the entire game. Like, who doesn't like... Safety restrictions offline. Harvesting servos. Engaged. Like, that's so cool. I love Faux Reaper's voice line as well. I think it's got a fantastic entrance. So, this card didn't really see any competitive play. Yeah. It's much more viable than Hemet and a lot of the other bad legendaries that we've talked about, but it, it's still kind of shaky. It should be pretty obvious why, but like, do you want to go through this, Jamie? Or? Yeah, so Faux Reaper's just 
Oh, it doesn't do anything the time you play it, and it's a, it's just stats, and it's reliant on attacking immediately for value. Yeah. As an 8-drop, it's actually quite good, but as 8, it's very heavily contested by Ragnaros at this point. I think it's saw a little bit of playing like Ramp Druid and the odd like mech control and just some weird th- things like that, right? So, I mean, the thing about the cleave effect is like, the best use of it these days is, in my opinion, easily the Reaper's Scythe weapon for Warrior, which is the 4-mana four 4-2 four weapon. Spell Burst, gain Cleave. That is a really good card. And it also has synergy with Cutting Class, so you can draw a bunch of cards easily, activate the Spell Burst, that kind of thing. And it sort of sees playing like what a lot of people are doing with in Rage Warrior. And that's a really good implementation of cleave but the thing about that implementation of cleave is that you've got the initiative right so the historic problem with four reaper and a lot of the other cleave cards actually is the fact that they're just so slow it's like four reaper comes down on turn eight when they're probably not playing lots and lots of minions every turn and then they have an entire turn to just deal with it somehow it's got six attack and it's you know you can sort of trade into it with a lot of other seven drops and maybe an eight drop or something like that so it's not great there the best case scenario for something like Four Reaper is that your opponent has absolutely no minions and for some reason they want to go really, really wide. So if they want to play like, I don't know, a Spreading Plague or something like that. But that situation just never happens. Yeah. That's not realistic. So, yeah, that's kind of the problem with it. But I've just had a quick look at some of the other Cleave cards that are about, and I dispute that, Re- I don't think Reaper sides the best at all. Go on. I think Lake Thresh has been much more impactful. Yeah, I can see that. Guardian Animals, Druid was better than any Reaper's Scythe Warrior deck. For reference, Lake Thresher is a 5-mana 4-6 beast with Cleave. Neutral as well. And you see it very, very frequently in Arena. It's just like a really, really good 5-drop. Yeah. That's a really interesting card to compare to 4 Reaper because it's obviously kind of easier to trade into with a lot of like small minions that you may have or like another five drop or something like that and a ping and some f- and stuff like that. But the fact that it comes down on five, like four damage may be dealt to a minion and not taking very much in return. Like for example, if you've got a taunt and you've not positioned your minions very well and stuff like that, that's pretty good. And obviously like Jamie says, Guardian Animals giving it initiative is kind of crazy. My sort of opinion of the, the card in relation to Fur Reaper is that it comes down to the way the game goes. So if you're playing something on turn eight and then having it live a turn until turn nine, you don't want to be trading with it as a general rule. And like trading on turn nine is not as much of a thing as it is on turn six or whatever. Especially not if you're winning. Yeah, Late Thresher excels at cleaning up early game cards like four attack adjacent minions you know cleave that'll kill most things that come down turns one to five right yep it's very effective because you're still within the point where you want to be playing for board control with minions at that point but at turn eight it just kind of loses it a bit again this is kind of like the devs maybe sort of experimenting with what works in hearthstone and what doesn't yeah i found it an interesting card to talk about because it's obviously like an early example of their design and the sort of process that they go through and oftentimes like mechanics like this their first implementation is kind of on the safe side so we sort of like poisonous in my exner for example and that sort of thing and i like a lot of the discover effects in league of explorers right a lot of them are kind of way below the power level of what even like you would see like a couple of years later and Fall Reaper is no different yeah if you were designing this card and it has to be in GVG and it has to not be completely broken how do you make Fall Reaper more playable I think giving it rush would be kind of silly well yeah I mean that that, that wouldn't work um, not, not in 2014 <laughs> no I'm trying to think maybe give it Divine Shield I mean that would still probably be a bit good but maybe that's the closest thing just to make it a bit more sticky yeah I don't know if that addresses the issue because the problem is it's like if it's against an aggro deck, which is what this wants to target, they're just going to go around it. But you can't give it to ta- Well, giving it to ta- seems weird, right? I don't know if it fits with the card either. No, it doesn't. Because you want it to be like this big, towering, sort of menacing card. And the stat line already kind of does that. Like, I don't think giving it more health is the answer either, so... I meant to say something about Fur Reaper, actually. Oh, go it's on. Just a- it's my usual segment about the Gamepedia strategy page. Like... One of the sentences is, 
Since the foe reaper's main strength lies in attacking other minions, the opponent may try to neutralize it before it's able to attack. <laughs> Five head. The opponent may try to remove an eight drop. Wow. <laughs> Mimiron's head, five mana, four, five, mech, neutral, legendary. At the start of your turn, if you have at least three mechs, destroy the ball and form Voltron or V07TR0N, whatever you want to say. So Voltron. And Voltron is an eight mana, four, eight, charge, Mega Wind Fury mech. Mega Wind Fury means that instead of attacking twice, can attack four times. I like to do this thing when we're looking at really old cards. I like to type the card's name into the like competitive subreddit and half pawn and all these sort of things. I kind of want to get people's like first impressions or theory crafts for these sort of cards, right? So obviously we've already talked about how people thought Trog's always going to be kind of crazy, how people thought Dr. Boom was just terrible because it's seven mana, do nothing, like whatever. So, Mimiron's Head. It's never quite had like as polarizing a reception as either of those two cards. But I have seen a lot of people say that, oh, it obviously goes in every mech deck because if your opponent can't clear this and two other mechs, you get an insane payoff, right? And that was the logic. And fair enough, it's GVG. It's the first pack expansion. And then sure enough, this card has seen absolutely no competitive play. And it's just a, it's a complete meme card. Um, what do you want to say about this card, Jamie? It's mostly true that, but it's, it's had a bit of use. Like, I, I can see why they say that because like, it's an alternate win condition, obviously. It's a very, very low cost because a five mana four or five mech, whilst it's not good in a mech, synergy based deck it's kind of all right and five shot was kind of a sticky spot for mechs because they don't have that much or at least at this point they didn't i'm going to say mech rogue used to run it mech rogue is always is, is a half decent aggro deck and i think i'm fairly sure that used to run this i could be wrong but occasionally see saw play mech hunter as well just as a kind of tech if you will but it was never sort of good you know what I mean? But it was like an option. Again, we go back to this thing about interactivity in Hearthstone, and you'll clearly see at the very first line of this card's effect that it says, at the start of your turn. The problem with that is you're obviously asking your opponent to not do anything and not kill your mechs. Um, you're also obviously relying on yourself to have a board of mechs anyway, so you're already kind of in like a decent spot. So it's a bit, it's a bit dicey. Yeah, it's, it's vaguely usable but it's no more than vaguely usable, really. Like, it's, it's not the worst card in the set, not by a long shot. It's yeah. fine to put into mech decks if you just fancy bucking around with it, and it'll sometimes work, but... I think this is, like, one of the original... I want to call them, like, challenge cards. Yeah, that, but that building challenge, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I think Starlock and Fugan may have been, like, the first ones of those, and then this is kind of a continuation of that, where you've just got this kind of crazy payoff, but you've got this really hard condition to summon it and you know you've got to try and get there somehow just before we go to the gamepedia and talk about the quality content that is on there would you change anything on Mimron's head no no i agree the card does exactly what it want you want from it it's an alternate win condition and it's at a point where it's not too good or too bad yeah i agree playable if you want to play it you'll get it off sometimes but it's not super competitive and interactive as it could have could be I mean, it could easily have been, like, at the end of your turn, if you have at least three mechs, destroy them and summon Voltron, then Voltron has, like, stealth or something like that. They, that would obviously just be kind of daft. That would be my concern, is that if you make it cheaper or some rubbish or any sort of buff or make it more sturdy or something, or give it stealth, it's just going to make it problematic, and then that's no better than the current spot. So there's some soft taunts in, like, mech-based aggro decks anyway, so... Having another one to curve into means that it's... I think that was the, the thought process in Mech Hunt when it used to play it occasionally. We've had, like, Mech combo decks in Wild before. You know, Snip Snap Warlock kind of ran the meta for a good few months. It kind of made me stop playing for quite a while. Yeah. <laughs> so we've seen, like, what this can do if it's good. And I'm glad it's kind of just not too great or consistent or anything like that. Like, I'm very happy with it. And also, if it was really, really good and consistent... It wouldn't be nearly as satisfying, would it? So, right, come on, Jamie, give me some memes. There's this, this, this line about 
its main downside all friendly mechs will be destroyed yada yada this makes the value of Mimiron largely dependent on the mechs on the board now here we go if Mimiron destroyed a mech Janita Therma plug in addition to itself this could be considered a poor trade <laughs> however if the other mechs destroyed were clockwork gnomes it could be considered a very beneficial trade <laughs> If you've played Mechgenia Thermal Plug and you've not already won at this point, I think you've got bigger problems to worry about. That's not the best, the best bit. Here we go. As with Wind Fury, this makes the enemy hero the ideal target for its attack. <laughs> well, there you go. It's going for <laughs> go face, apparently. Cheers, Gamepedia. I couldn't agree more. Biggest minion or face. That's That's how it goes. Vol'jin, 5 mana, 6-2, Priest, Legendary Minion, Battlecry, Swap Health with another minion. Alright, we found a good card. Yes, a good card. Right, Jamie, I know you absolutely love Vol'jin. Why do you like Vol'jin so much? I just think it's cool, really. And it's just, I, I don't, you know what, I don't actually own the card, funnily enough. Really? Okay. I was too late. It was just as it was being phased out of deck was when I had like the resources to be able to craft it. And so I just never ended up crafting it. If it's if it gets starts getting played again, you best bet it's immediately getting crafted because I really like it. This has been a slow priest. This was a should I say a slow priest staple for pretty much years, really. I think we have to understand like what Vol'jin is actually trying to accomplish because obviously Priest has access to plenty of removal in spells, right? Shadow Word Death, Shadow Word Pain as well. Vol'jin is trying to accomplish something a bit different, right? It's trying to say, right, I'm going to gain a lot of tempo, steal a bunch of health and create like a really overstarted minion and kill a guy at the same time. It's the old half stun thing of kill a guy, make a guy, right? So, Holy Nova, Penance, Holy Smite, Shadow, Formal, anything like that all just mm. turns into plus Vol'jin, kill a guy. And then also, if it's anything with decent health, Vol'jin comes into play as a massive statted minion at the same time. It's just very efficient, comboed with another removal. You've got to remember at this point in the game, like because everything is so mid-rangey, especially by like today's standards, You've always got like a kind of decent board, especially on like turn five or a bit later when you're probably more likely to play Vol'jin and get the most amount of value off of it. So it's kind of easy to actually activate this in this sort of meta. Nowadays, Priest decks don't really sort of do that because they don't really care about the minion tempo. They don't really want to fight for the board. They're, fell they're absolutely prepared to lose the board and just clear wave after wave of minions with stuff like a wave of apathy, Cabal Acolyte, uh, Psychic Scream, Light Bomb, as I've said, Holy Nova, that sort of thing. It's just reached a critical mass of removal, right? Yeah, and for me, I kind of think that's a bit of a shame because I really enjoy the sort of trading aspect of Hearthstone. I think it's a really interesting part of it, and I feel like it's not really exercised as much these days in Constructed. I will give it that it's kind of weak into aggro, which is why it wasn't always run. Well, I say weak into aggro, it's weak into widespread aggro, right? But it's still like, you know, your opponent plays a mysterious challenger, right? And you just steal its health. Like, that's still really, really good. <laughs> Something else I like about Vol'jin is that it goes on both sides of the board. So if you have a low attack, high health minion, say like a 2-6 or something, you can Vol'jin like your own guy. It, it kind of just make your attack more useful if you know what i mean yeah i think the other thing about it is like you, you sort of alluded to earlier is it, it's just so elegant yeah this is kind of a superfluous thing but just like seeing a, a card with just two lines of text and yet it's so like you say versatile and interesting and like how it sort of changes the, the board yeah that's really rare for a card, especially in like 2014. Like it's kind of like um, a few episodes ago, we were talking about Light Bomb Priest with Toshley. Do you know the sort of toolbox deck where you sort of have to sort of invent a win condition and kind of like work out what to do on the fly, and everything's really versatile. And you know, it's a deck that's greater than the sum of its parts. And Vol'jin is kind of that in a minion. It's quite similar to Firelands Paul to what you look at it. If it hits anything with like seven health or higher. Or even like six, but at least it's still worth it because a six six or even a six five is better than your average five drop. 
You know, Priest has got some really interesting legendaries that play for the board, right? It's got the free free. Yeah, Kaj, yeah. Natalie, nameless one. Yeah. You know how much of an advocate for Kaj I am. Absolutely. Should we talk about our final card? Let's. Trade Prince Gallywix. Six mana, five eight, rogue legendary. Whenever your opponent casts a spell, gain a copy of it and give them a coin. Now, this coin is not just your average coin, it's Gallywix's coin. It's a green coin. More importantly, in brackets, won't trigger Gallywix. All right, this is also a really cool card. Who doesn't love Gallywix? So, this is one of my favourite cards in the game, probably. I love this card. Strongest card in the game for flavour, right? You know, it's this, like, sort of slimy merchant that'll, like do anything to make money and then he's like he'll, he sees you your spell that you cast and he just like buys a copy of it yeah <laughs> I just think that's really good essentially as, as far as like flavour goes again it's this interesting thing like with Trogzor it's another anti-spell card but again it like gives you the option of like well you can play the spell if you really really want and you'll get a coin for it so you'll get like a tiny benefit but your opponent will get like you don't know you're twisting nether or you're assassinate or whatever so god damn I do I fully agree with you they knock the flavour for this absolutely out of the park like it's just yeah it's just great as far as playability goes I'm fairly sure it's not seen much which is kind of weird because at a five eight for six mana, that's like really good stats. It's, it's attack enough that you can like do damage and trade into stuff, and it's really high health, so it's quite hard to remove it unless you've got unconditional removal. I think the answer for this is like there on the card, and you know why? It's a rogue card. If it was a priest card, it would have seen a lot of play. If it was a deck that a class that could support a control sort of resource based archetype. That goes past turn six when it wants to have value. We sort of mentioned this when we spoke in the first episode, but this is the first legendary for Rogue after Edwin Van Cleef, right? So you've got to consider, like, Edwin Van Cleef, really iconic card, and it synergizes really, really well with the cards that Rogue got in the classic set, and then lots and lots of cards that it's gotten since, right? Yeah. Then you look at Gallywix, and on paper it seems like kind of a good card, because it's just this value generator, your opponent doesn't really want to play any spells, it's got good stats, like you say, like 6 mana, 5, 8, that's a, that's a really good stat line, right? But then you've got to wonder, like, okay, what rogue deck wants, like, all this value? And the answer is kind of none of them, and it's never really been any of them, so... The other problem is, like, imagine you're playing against a priest, and they give you, like, Shadow Word Pain and Shadow Word Death and that sort of thing. It's like, oh, you're a rogue. Yeah oil rogue at this point and you're like right how do i just hit them in the face and they're giving you all this removal and you're like well i don't want any of this for all that we said about flavor and i really like the card and you obviously really like the card it is a kind of a bizarre card to print (laughs) because of what rogue wants to do at this point they could have gone further down the sort of control rogue type route but they decided that that wasn't going to happen and as such gallows has kind of been left in limbo really i think it's a real shame because i i think it would be a really genuinely powerful in a different class i'll tell you what whenever i've gotten it off of random effect in other classes or in tavern brawls or in arena or something it's been really good yeah yeah so and every time i've played against it, it's been really really annoying to deal with i think it's just the fact that it takes up a card slot which sounds weird but i mean like the other problem with this card when you're playing oil rogue in this sort of meta, it's the problem that Gallywix is kind of unplayable in the mirror because of the fact that giving your opponent all these coins is really, really dangerous. Yeah, exactly. It has never been played much. But I can't but hope it might be at some point, but I, I think you just need to change class or something. A control rogue, at the very least, has to be somewhat viable, right? That That's like a, a non-start. It has to absolutely be like a viable archetype. It's not going in like a tempo rogue because it doesn't do what that deck wants to do. So if you're thinking of like a control rogue and it's running this and you're getting copies of your opponent's spells and let's say it gives you like two or three spells before it dies or maybe even four or something like that. And I'm thinking about this in wild because obviously it's not in standard. It's obviously giving you all this value 
but it's you're playing these cards that it gives you rather than the cards that you actually put in your deck, which are probably more efficient. Yeah, well, it's a bit too synergistic. I don't know. Like, you look at the other GVG cards that they gave it, and none of them synergized with Gallywix either. It's not even like, like they decided to briefly take a little foray into like control rogue and then you know a short while later they decided oh we don't really like this let's just do the tempo rogue thing it's like they instantly printed this card and then just printed you know oil you think what what are you doing (laughs) so i don't know i've got some trivia about galley works if you're interested so apparently the original design for it was Battle cry, swap your hero's health with your opponent hero's health. <laughs> now, it must have been early in the game, so I can't for anybody to think any effect like that was a good idea. Dean I other said they played one game with it and they were just like, no way. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, that's just about it for this episode. It's been an absolute pleasure telling you about these uh, interesting, shall we say, cards from GVG. We've got one part of GVG left after this. We might do something on Dark Moon Fair in the future. I don't really know yet, but yeah, we'll see. Anyway, that's goodbye from me. And goodbye from me. Thanks for listening, everybody. And stay safe. Stay safe.